guys welcome back to my channel so today I'm gonna to do an unboxing and first impressions video because yesterday I went out with my good friend Morgan and bought a lot of makeup that I've heard about seen reviews on and just never really bought just because one I'm skint and two I've never really had a reason to have more makeup but it seemed like the perfect excuse to spend some of my birthday money that I got so I'm going to show you what each item I got first and then we'll apply it see how it applies I'm going to be 100% honest, obviously none of this is sponsored so it will be a complete honest review of what I personally think I'm first going to prep my skin, exfoliate, I'm going to use my toner and everything, moisturiser So first I'll just go through every product So I went to Debenhams which is a department store that sells loads of different products and brands So I went to the MAC counter finally and bought so that's why I have a MAC bag not everything is from MAC though I got um, this primer I have used the actual full size version before when I went apparently the gift set is cheaper than buying the full size products alone at the minute the lady kind of came up to me and said if you're buying that buy this instead so we're going to unbox that I haven't used the other little minis you get with it yet though there's uh, the professional matte rescue and it's potent eye cream I've never really used an eye cream before so I'll definitely start using that more often and see if it does make a difference then for foundation I got the Too Faced Born This Way foundation I got shade Snow because again I'm very pale the man was very kind to offer his help to find my shade and weirdly I wasn't the lightest so I will be trying that first time today my friend Morgan also bought me the wet n wild photo focus foundation so I will be trying that in another video I'm going to try the Too Faced one today but I will give my first impressions on that as well she absolutely loves that so I, and I do trust her with her makeup expertise so I will be trying that on a, on a different video as well to match the Too Faced foundation I got the setting powder but not the Born This Way I bought the peach one because I smell it and I fell in love with it but obviously if it smells good but acts rubbish there's no point in smelling good so I thought I'd give that a go it's also the packaging in the store looked really amazing so I'm, and I'm a sucker for packaging then I got the MAC eyeliner this is the Pro Longwear Fluid Eyeliner Gel apparently it's waterproof which I need I do wear eyeliner nearly every single day anytime I'm going out I will wear eyeliner just because I, I like my eyes with a long wing as you probably noticed both my videos already I do have an eyeliner flick so I'll be trying that out and if it's not waterproof I will be questioning why they sold this to me because I specifically asked twice to two different ladies is it waterproof so we'll see if you like to me she also got me the elf baked highlighter in moonlight pearls apparently you have to scratch the top off of this before you use it but I am going to try both before and after I don't really like the idea of scraping product off with my finger but if you have to do it to get the the good payoff of it I don't mind I also got the flawless chisel cheeks contour cream kit palette by Barry M I don't usually use cream contour so I thought I'd give it a go now it's a little bit like the Anastasia cream contour as like a dupe so we'll see if it's as good I do obviously use the powder version of the Anastasia one I haven't used the cream contour one yet so we'll see how that one weighs up against it I also got one of the Fenty Beauty highlighters it's a kilowatt foil freestyle highlighter duo it's in part of like the summer collection from last year I have opened this and swatched it I did have a look in the store as well and I do like it so I will be playing around with that as well I got the Barry M holographic eyeshadow topper this is like a liquid eyeshadow topper again I have opened this and swatched it and I was very impressed because I'm not a big fan of Barry M but I think that's because the last time I tried it was a while ago so they might have improved a lot since then but while I was doing some of the bits around my house I come across it uh, after I bought it and I swatched it on the back of my hand and after a few minutes of it drying I couldn't get it off by smudging so I definitely am excited to try that then for setting spray I got the Urban Decay D Slick Oil Control Setting Spray I just got the mini because by the time I picked everything else up I was running out of money so I just got the mini my mum uses this and she absolutely loves it because I used to use the green one the B vitamin one I think I will put a picture on the screen of what I used to use and I, I really did like that apparently this is even better so I'll see if mama really knows what she's on about so I'll put that on at the end I might do some check-ins later tonight and see how each product wears up if not I'll do check-ins in a different video but let's get started so let me just open this 
haven't opened any of this yet, so I'm actually really excited. Oh, yeah, so it is full size because that is what I was originally going to buy. And then you get a little eye cream in that little jar there. Let's see what it smells like. It just smells like product. It just smells like product. So I think I tried this on the back of my hand when I first originally bought this one and I chose this one over that one. But it was actually 50p cheaper to get all of these together than just that, so I was like. So that's those. Foundation, we are gonna use our high-end one rather than a drugstore. But one, I might even try and do like a half and half face of each one with the same primer just to see how each holds up together. But for now, we're just going to go in with the Too Faced Born This Way. And it just has a little pump, and it's 30 milliliters, which is very standard for a foundation. So they're not skipping out on any product. That is the powder. I can even smell it through the seal, which is amazing. That says main base stuff. I haven't bought any eyebrow tin or eyebrow gel or anything, just because everything I've tried compared to the Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills is basically the queen of eyebrows. I just don't find the need to change that experiment with that. So I am just going to go in with my usual pomade by Anastasia Beverly Hills in top when I get down to it. First, let's us prime the face with using that. I'm just going to rub that into the face. So this I have used before so I already know how good it is. It is a very good blurring and pore filling primer. It is rated one of the best ones in the UK I believe. If not I will correct that in the video but I, I think I think it is. I think I remember seeing a sign on when I bought it actually. So we're going to go on to foundation. They're born this way. We're just going to use my damp beauty blender. I'm going to pop that round and then blend it in. The colour of it I like because it's literally the same colour as my neck. Compared to my other foundation shades, they're either too light, too dark, I could never find my foundation shades, so that is a really nice shade for me. It doesn't say to be full coverage, it's medium to full coverage, but at the minute, I don't know if I need more, so I am gonna I am gonna apply it because apparently it can be buildable. So I'm just gonna put one more square on there and dab it round. That is two layers of the foundation on now and I can see it is quite buildable but I can still see this one spot I do have there quite well. I, I will probably try and cover that up with some concealer while I'm highlighting but usually it can cover these blemishes. You can see a little bit down here as well. The texture of it is nice though, it's almost completely set already. I am obviously still getting a little bit on my fingers when I do that. But I do quite like it, but we'll see later on because you never know how the products are going to sit on top of it. So off camera, I am going to do my eyebrows now and I will see you with both eyebrows on. I love concealed underneath my eyes as well because I have got a new concealer. The concealer I will be using is the Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. It is the best I've ever used. Again, any products you recommend me to try, please say so in the comments. But I'm going to use both of these to do my eyebrows and then I'll be right back. But that is eyebrows all done off camera. Obviously I applied some concealer underneath the shape then and I've applied concealer under my eyes. So now I'm going to try the contour kit which is by Barry M. That is what the palette looks like again. I'm going to take the cellophane off. Sometimes I hate these little draggy things. Sometimes they're really satisfying and sometimes they just like... Right, so there we go. I would probably use the lightest one, definitely. I'm just going to use this unbranded brush. It's just very dense and fluffy. I'm going to go into that lightest shade there. There we go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what the hell? Right. 
So I definitely put too much on, but to be honest, that didn't even seem like a lot when I put it in the, in the palette. Let me see if this foundation can cover a little bit of it up. The only other cream contour I've used is the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks. And after I got used to using them, I did quite like them. You do have to like buff them in really quick because they are very drying. But I still, I still prefer powders. I don't know how you can do it with a cream. But let's just give it another attempt. I haven't covered it fully up. Okay, that looks a little bit better. It's very wide contour at the minute. All right, let's do the other cheekbone. Still, even with that, it still, it still looks like a lot. I don't mind it, to be honest. Once it's buffed out, and it's not too difficult to buff out, you've just gotta be very careful with how much you would put on originally. And then I always put some on the jawline. So that is contour done. I think I will have to practice a lot more with it so if it does look quite patchy on camera, in person it doesn't look too patchy but if it does look patchy on camera, I'm sorry. But I don't know what to do with it. So now I am going to set the under eyes using the Peach Perfect Too Faced Powder. Open it up. It is pink. I usually just use white because I like to put it over everything, even my contour and usually translucent can go over any skin tone. But I thought I'm pink anyway so let's just give this a go and see. It might even be my new favourite palette. I'm just going to use my BH Cosmetics brush. This is 113. Just like a normal fluffy powder brush. I'm just going to dip that in, but I'm just going to get rid of any creases that might have happened during the contouring for three hours. It does actually make you want to eat it. <laughs> That is the powder on. I do actually really like the way it looks. It hasn't made me look really pale like usually translucent obviously does because it's white but it seems to look quite nice. Now we're moving on to eyes. So I'm going to prime my lids using what I usually do. This is just MAC Pro Longwear Paint Parting Painter. So that is eyes primed. So I haven't got any new eyeshadow palettes because I have thousands anyway, so I am going to use one that I haven't used on this channel just yet. It's quite an old palette, it's just the Huda Beauty Rose Gold palette, it's not the remastered one. Personally, I do prefer these foil formulas more than the metallic formulas, and then she changed up the whole kind of thing that they were going for with this kind of textured foil palette. I do have the other ones as well, I do still like them, but this was just like iconic when it first came out, everyone absolutely loved it. It's absolutely filthy. <laughs> But I am going to go, because obviously we're using this eyeshadow topper, it's like purple and green. I might go in with Bosse. I'll go in with Bosse and Suede. Suede on the outside and then Bosse on the inner crease just to match it up with this a little bit more. See like kind of like a smoky eye with this on top, so we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to go in with the Zoeva 227 Look Soft Definer brush and I'm going to go in the crease with that Suede. So just to blend it in a little bit more, I'm going to go in with the Lux Crease Brush by Zoeva again. This is number 228. I'm just going to go in where the pigment is quite built up just to blend it all together a little bit nicer. So 
now I'm going to go in with the burgundy colour which is named Bosse. I'm just going to go into the crease and blend it into that transition shade suede. So that is both those colours laid down on both eyes. So now we are going to use our eyeshadow topper, which is by Barry M. I'm just going to pop that on and see how that looks. So it is more green than it is purple. So that is one I've done with that. What I've done with it is I've just applied it onto the main part of my lid. I've not got into my crease at all. I want it to kind of look a little bit cut crease it rather than blend it together. Sometimes your eyelids can print on the crease of your eye and that's when you've just got to give up and try and blend it together. But I'm going to try my best to wait until it's fully dry before looking many directions so it doesn't print very much it is already kind of smudging upwards but nothing too dramatic that it looks ridiculous so I'm just going to do the other eye you'll probably get to see it a little bit better from that side So that is it on both eyes, I'm just going to wait for that to set just before I do anything else major but I'm going to also see how eyeliner looks on top of it because sometimes when you apply something on top of an eyeshadow topper it can smudge all of it and come off on your brush and come off in clumps so we'll just see how it holds up after it's dried. So that's what the MAC paint pot looks like, it is in shade black track, it's just like a black jet liner. Completely untouched. Just get my brush ready and then I'll see you when this I can actually move my face again. <laughs> but both of those are dry now. Just off camera while I was waiting I put a little bit of both those eyeshadows I used for the crease just under my eyes just to bring it all together. So now I'm going to do the eyeliner just as I usually would. Nice cat flick and uh, we'll see how that goes. So the eyeliner, I don't know if I like or not, to be honest, it's gone on really nicely, like it's a nice formula as in the way it moves on the eyelid, but it, I can see through it in certain areas, you probably won't be able to see on camera, but it's not jet black as I would want it, and as I'm putting that second layer on top of it, it's kind of rubbing the first layer off, and that's what I kind of avoid when I'm looking for a good eyeliner. And the eyeshadow is kind of doing what I thought it might. It is balling up quite a bit as I'm pushing the eyeliner across. It was definitely 100% dry before I put this eyeliner on. So that is one eyeliner done. Like I said, I'm not overly impressed. I'm going to do the other eye. Maybe it'll set darker, you know, you never know. When these things set, they can go darker, lighter, look awful, look decent. So we shall see. I'm just going to do the other eye. So that is eyeliner done on both eyes. 
Mm, I don't know what I think about the eyeliner. For double the price of what I paid for the morph one, it doesn't seem to have done any bit of a job. And the morph one seems to last all day. It doesn't go on flake it or run it or... And still I'm touching it now after a few minutes of it being on my eye, it's still coming off. Maybe I'll have to try it with a normal base eyeshadow, so just like a matte or like a metallic eyeshadow powder rather than this liquid one. But to be honest, it shouldn't really have affected the way that the eyeliner went on. Now I'm going to do eyelashes, so I'm just going to use the ones I usually use, just the gimme gimme ones that I use in every single video because I'm unoriginal. That is eyelashes and top mascara done. The mascara I use is just the one that I usually use. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan. It's very wet and doesn't dry very good and it kind of clumps my lashes together. But with fake eyelashes it doesn't matter because obviously you, you can't really see your normal lashes. But with the bottom ones I have to be really, really careful and wipe off nearly all the ink. Now we're going to go on to highlighter. So obviously I do have this drugstore one that I got, this is the e.l.f. one, I'm just going to take it out of the packet. She definitely got the right shade for me because I basically either got like ice white or pinky white and that does seem a little bit gold but like a cool toned gold so it's like perfect for me. I'm just going to swatch it first, yeah there's, there's hardly any payoff. too bad but it is still quite sheer so I'm going to do what she says but I'm going to use some nail scissors and scrape off a little bit of the top see that's better oh okay so what I might do I might put one on this cheek and then use the Fenty Beauty one on the other I'm going to use the highlighting brush I usually use that is really nice. Yeah, really like that. Yeah, really, really like that. Thank you, Morgan. <laughs> I'm gonna try the Fenty Beauty one on the other cheek. I haven't used this properly yet. So, obviously, we've got the classic Fenty Beauty packaging. This one has Sandcastle and Minted Mojito in it. I'll just show you the pan. So that is the pan just there. So I applied the Fenty highlighter to this side using the same brush. Not overly impressed with it. It does seem very glittery rather than pigmented. I like a, a highlighter that's blinding from underneath as well as like on top with all the glitter. So I'm not taken back entirely by that but if you like a really glittery glowy highlighter that's fine. But I definitely prefer the L side and it's like half the price. And I also just set my face using the setting spray. I did say it kind of smelled like uh, baby wipes but it, it's not too bad because once it's on there, it's on there. It's not like you have to keep smelling it throughout the day. My skin just feels very nicely set. It doesn't feel sticky. It wasn't wet too long. Most of today's products were really good. I, I really liked the L highlighter. It was really, really surprising as well. I really liked the foundation, it went on very nicely and along with the peach setting powder it seems to really work nicely together, even though they're not from the same collection, which is nice because that means you can obviously, you don't have to stick to that collection. I will say, I have got a little bit of creasing from under my eyes but when you try a new product out, you don't know how much of each product to use so I'll just make sure I put a little bit more under my eyes next time. The eyeshadow topper. I really liked as well. I might even get some more colours. Obviously this colour is not good for like everyday purposes but for experimenting um, I also added this lipstick. I forgot to mention. I added this lipstick from Beauty Bakery. I have ever had it for quite a while. I just have never used it. Thought today while we have weird eyes let's go weird lips as well. Let's just look like a full blown alien. It's like a grey blue bluey colour. It's called Parisian Streets this one. These lipsticks do last all day through eating and drinking as well. It's not like even the littlest bit does not come off. So that is what I used there. 
And yeah, the only thing I wasn't very impressed with was the Fenty highlighter and the eyeliner, unfortunately. I was really looking forward to trying this out, but like I said, it went on quite patchy and streaky. It seemed to move the eyeshadow topper around. I don't know if that was the eye top eyeshadow topper fault or the MAC product. But I will try it out again because you never know, like I said, once you get a new product, you have to learn what each product is about. But yeah, I think that's it. Thank you again for watching. Please let me know which product was your favourite, which one you'd like to try yourself. I'm sure there are many products that I could try alongside these as well that would work out even better than what I've used them with today. So if you have any recommendations, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you want to follow my journey on here. This is only my third video of my YouTube live. Give it a like if you really enjoyed it. Favourite if you really want to as well. And yeah, it's been Beauty Kitten and thank you for watching. Goodbye.